Good morning, folks. We've got the polar vortex, space weather research, the galactic scale, literally, and more identifications of Earth's catastrophe cycle in the past. We are starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours was mostly quiet. The active regions are not large or flaring. The coronal hole streams have been modest thus far. A small filament did try to erupt center disk on the north after one went out to the left. It really just sort of faded out in the upper corona. The solar wind from the coronal holes is ramping up, but very slowly. We did get to pretty fast streams this morning, but the slower onset has allowed the Earth's magnetic field to handle it well with only minor pushback from that solar wind. Folks, let's go to Stratobserve and find the polar vortex is humming in the north. Right now, she is strong, and there are, of course, cold snaps and snow events, but not the super cold events we expect later this winter when the polar vortex events begin to occur. The current formation is holding, but the distending into an oval will cause a slight push from being centered on the pole, likely to shift a bit towards the Americas in the coming week. Up next, the scientists are weighing the Milky Way, literally, but as has always been the case, there isn't a whole lot of agreement. This one, for example, says one trillion stellar masses, and another one out the same time says about half that. The marks using the best possible methods are still off by a factor of two. Paper here on CME versus sheath-driven geomagnetic storms at the extreme nature, what it takes to get the big ones. Interestingly, while we have long known that the Carrington level flare is about every 200 years, here they say the 1989 Quebec blackout can be expected about once a century. Of course, an equal storm did strike in 1921 and came close in the 1940s, 50s, and 70s. I'm betting they're underestimating the frequency of the non-super flare peak events. And speaking of underestimating, turns out the helium in the corona is affecting the wave instabilities and other wave dynamics. They usually don't model that helium and didn't expect it to have this effect. But veteran observers, if you are wondering if those unseen effects described here are what I was talking about with the helium and other coronal chemistry changes right now, being a bad sign for future activity on the sun, yes, yes they are. Down the stretch here, coming to one that reminds us of how off the datings can be. This paper is clearly looking at the Helena Pauli half-cycle magnetic event, which was about 18 or 19,000 years ago. But this specific method and analysis has the event starting a bit back further in time. So they try to give it another name. It doesn't deserve one. A good general rule is to be ready to adjust 1,000 years for every 10,000 years into the past. And folks, here are the ranges they have seen with the major events occurring and no, they don't think that they are long events or different events, but over the decades, these ranges have revealed themselves through different imperfect dating techniques. And folks, no adjustments needed here. They snagged the Heinrich II event, which came with the Lake Mungo excursion in the last glacial maximum. They nailed the Helena Pauli at the half cycle at Heinrich I, and of course the Younger Dryas and Gothenburg excursion as well. Folks, it used to be I'd be astounded at studies nailing multiple events and not just one, and now it seems like a weekly occurrence. We greatly appreciate your support down to the wire to get our books for the holidays. Shipping is taking forever and the store will take the last couple weeks of December off, so get in your orders for textbooks or the kids' books or whatever else now at otf.cells.com. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.